Hey y'all, good morning. So I'm here, uh, I'm in Ohio, and this is my nephew, Mac, and he's introducing me to some cows. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world So these four cows, uh, well this one right here was born and raised on my property, but these four cows, they're just for breeding. Um, they're calves we use for either if they're uh, heifers or if they're female cows when they're born, then we use those for breeding. And if they're if they're born bulls, then uh, we uh, deal with that. And we've only ha ever had one steer here born when I was uh, working with them. So uh, he is now uh, down there. But all the calves we that all the calves that we get when here. When you say down there, what do you mean? Down there is in I'm sorry, down the hill is my grandfather's barn, and the two calves that were born here last summer uh, are or last this time of year, uh, so spring to winter, are down in the other barn. And so the cows that are born here stay here until they're too big for us to have them. Right, and, uh, that, and then what happens to them? Well, the steer, would go, he'll, he'll go to processing at some point. And when you say processing, what do you mean? Slaughter. This is like the tamest cow I've ever had. Mm -hmm. she, and when you say pattern. tame, what do you mean? I mean, she'll let you come up to her, pet her, scratch her. She will, she's, she's, she's warm to humans. She'll, she's broken to humans. She'll let you come up to her and be with her. Uh, so that, that's called being broken? If the cow is nice to a human, that's called being broken? Well, it, well, not necessarily, but if... But it, so it, if she was at a point where I could put a halter on her or like a neck lead mm -hmm. and walk her around, she'd be uh, broke to lead. Right. But so um, she's just tame or warm to humans or broke to humans. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't mind you coming up to her and walking around her. Mm -hmm. The other three... Uh, not so much. If, but if you have a bucket of grain, they'll fall year round. So they want food, but but they have like, do they have like personalities or are they yeah. just? Yeah. No. Um, uh, this one right here, uh, mm -hmm. the one that's newest, she's pretty shy, but uh, she really likes to be around uh, the the other little one in the herd, the uh -huh. herd, the herd of four. So they're friends. They're friends. Yeah. But the two biggest ones, she is the the alpha. The the big one over there is the alpha. Uh huh. And so she kind of tries to run things and whenever uh, the little ones try to get in to where she wants to be, she'll just nose her head on in there and say, no, nah, this is my spot, I'm the boss. And So they, they mm -hmm. the little ones kind of have to work around the bigger ones sometimes. But. So they so they have pet personalities, but you say they have personalities kind of like people have personalities? I I mean, I don't think they can think, obviously, like abstract like humans can think, of, like, you know, that, uh -huh. in that way. But I do think that... You know, if you if if you were to throw another cow out here, it'd offer a different vibe, a different, you know, mix to what we have. It wouldn't be like a uniform, okay, now we just have another one that does the exact same as these three. So they have their own kind of like social way of being together. Yeah. Oh, that's... And, and that, but that also changes with me because when I'm not here, they're going to act a lot differently than if, I were, than if I were here. And if I pull my dog in to be with them, mm -hmm. they're not going to be like, oh, hey, there's a dog here. Like, they're going to be, I don't know what this thing is. I'm going to take care mm -hmm. of it. So my question, so what do you think about this whole idea of um, people owning animals? People owning animals? Yeah, like we, like we just own them. Like, what did you think about that idea of people owning animals? Well, I think that when you, when you talk about, you know, ownership of an animal, you also have to think look at the owner itself I think uh-huh so you know I raise cattle and I don't have much real space for my cows but I do my best to uh, make sure that they can live the way they want to live you know they have uh, two pretty big pastures that they can roam around in and then my dog if you want to talk about my dog he's got this big farm that he can do whatever he wants to do in and I think part of ownership is letting what that animal is or letting what that um, uh, being is mm -hmm. do what it wants to do and not restrict it from doing it. And, and, mm -hmm. and that happens in a lot of places where, you know, if, if you have, oh, if you like to have a cat in the city, some cats want to be outside and moving around, but not all cats in the city can be outside and moving around. And so you have to restrict that cat to being indoors, but eventually that cat may be totally fine and happy with being indoors. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you've kind of developed a relationship with these Oh, cows. definitely. Oh, definitely. This, the, the, the newest one, you know, 
He's still working on it. We're still getting there. But the other three, they know me. If I walk in here, they, they look at me and they come up to me and they stick their tongue out and lick my hand and let me scratch their head. And then if they don't want me around them, they, they blow out their nose really hard and shake their head and then they walk away. And, mm -hmm. and they, I mean, obviously we can't have conversations, but their body language tells me a lot about what they're trying to say. So I guess and my next question is like, okay, so you've built a relationship with these cows, mm -hmm. right? Um, what would, what, how would you feel if someone just came in and did something to harm these cows? I like came in and, and like broke one of their legs or... Like did anything to harm them? I feel awful. I feel, that, that's, that, that's, that's not just like, oh man, someone got a cow, I gotta go buy a new one. That's like, like these are the first cows I have ever owned. Like these mm -hmm. are like, like these guys, eh, oh, sorry, these girls mean like, my relationship to farming like this isn't just this isn't just me to cattle this is more than that this is me to like friends like mm -hmm. these guys are my friends now i spend i spend at least four hours a day out here helping these guys live till tomorrow mm -hmm. especially in the winter but but yeah th it's more than just uh it's, it's not a matter of dang got that one i'll get a new one it's man you know pele is hurt we gotta we gotta help her right so then you were telling me yesterday that you were thinking about, um, you've been thinking about your relationship with food. Yes. And obviously there are a lot of people who would look at these and think, that's food. That's true. How do you feel about that? Uh, so uh, I guess we could go, on, go in the barn and I could show you. I, I do have two steers mm -hmm. that are meant for slaughter. Uh, mm -hmm. and they're meant for slaughter for next, like, September about. Mm -hmm. And so as a farmer, uh, as, as a farmer, I guess, because I don't have many cows, um, I kind of have this weird battle of, well, I raise things that are food, but these things are my friends. And I will grow to have a relationship with the two steers that are in the barn mm -hmm. before they go to slaughter and they... Um, and they'd be processed, but I will, but like these guys, they, I will spend hours and hours with them, making sure that they're okay and that they're happy and that they have plenty of space to roam. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm, the, the problem that I am and, the, and what I'm looking at my relationship with food is, you know, uh, I don't know if I really, uh, I don't know, I haven't really thought, put much thought into it, but I don't know how my relationship with my cows and how my relationship with food, uh, like, because my relationship with my cows is they're my friends, mm -hmm. but I guess I have this thing of, well, now the steak on the table is not my friend. The steak on the table is the steak on the table, mm -hmm. and that's meant for me to eat. I, I guess I, I, I also have never eaten something I have raised. Right. So do you feel like maybe you're starting to feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect between the way you think about these beings uh -huh and the way you've been thinking about what's been going on your plate? Yes, I think I, I have always had this disconnect, but I don't want to say I'm having an awakening, and I've always, I've, you know, I've realized that mm -hmm. my cattle will turn into beef. Not these guys, mm -hmm. but the ones I raised for slaughter will turn into beef. Right. But I've kind of, I've been thinking about it, and after having uh, four steers be processed and mm -hmm. kind of you know, lo losing those friends. And when you say what, what do you now is process the word that is used? Yes, process is the word that is used. Why do you think that word is used? I, th I, because well, it, they are actually being processed. So right. That's one thing. But the other thing is, it's, you know, it's, it's easier to say they're being processed and they're being versus they're being taken away and being killed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So. Um... Uh, in terms of that, so are you thinking about making any changes because of this? I am. Uh, this spring, I'm going to do some research and talk to you and talk to people. And this spring, I want to <laughs> make some... At first, I want to be subtle with the changes I make to my diet. Mm -hmm. And then I want to, for a month, go all in. And I don't know if it'll be veganism exactly or a little bit less or whatever it may be. But I definitely want to try something. So having a relationship with these animals has has shifted your thinking enough that you maybe don't want to eat them. Maybe. Yeah, okay. that's fair to say, yeah.
Okay. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto. Big guns and big guys. I love myself. But they can do what they want.